damage. Is that not? That's what it looks like. Matt, can you see, make sure we have sound? Was definitely not playing a seven. Okay. I'm not supposed to have Yeah, go ahead. This meeting is being held in conformance with the Sunshine Law. Notice of date, time, and place has been furnished to the Bergen Record and the Ridgewood News. Notice has also been furnished and put on the bulletin board of the administration building. Will the clerk please take the roll? Mayor Giordano? Here. Ms. Saracola? Here. Mr. Ritchie? Here. Mr. Schatz? Here. Mr. Shalero? Here. Mrs. Sherman? Here. Everyone kindly rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Good evening, everyone, and we will start our meeting by myself having my report being done. First of all, we are doing some recognitions tonight. One of them is recognizing members of the Waldwick uh, Police Department. Unfortunately, the chief told us that the, the officers cannot be here tonight, but I still want to recognize them and talk about why we are honoring them tonight. First of all, on November 30th, 2022, the Waldeck Police Department arrested a 40-year-old Mawa person for, shooting an, for a shooting incident that occurred on the morning of November 30th in the borough of Waldwick. The person was uh, developed as a suspect by Detective Dave Passaretti and Detective D.J. Palaya after an investigation of the shooting incident on Grove Street. This person was taken into custody by the Waldeck Police Department and, and with the assistance of the Mawa Police Department and the Bergen County Regional SWAT team. A motive for the shooting is still under investigation. This person was charged with firearm offense and was transported to the Bergen County Jail. The officers that were involved in this uh, uh, helping of our community was Lieutenant Seaford, Detective Sergeant Passaretti, Detective Palaya, Sergeant Sinclair, Police Officer Sherman, Police Officer Van Dyke. Also, on January 3rd of this year, at 7.30 a.m. in the morning, Waldeck Police responded to a report of a male party peering into a, a home on Wanamaker Avenue. Officers responded and set up a perimeter. A police canine was requested and local schools were requested to shelter in place. The male party was located and apprehended a short time later after a brief foot pursuit by the officers from Waldwick, Saddle River, Midland Park, and Wyckoff. The male party was identified as a 26-year-old person whose known address was in Allendale. This person was wanted by New Jersey State Patrol after uh, scounding from a facility on December 29th. He is also a suspect in several area bur burglaries <coughs> over the last several days and has been incarcerated for burglary in the past. This person was transferred into custody uh, by the New, New York State Parole, New Jersey State Parole and remained to, and was given over to the Bergen County Jail. He is facing charges out of Waldwick for CDS, resisting arrest, criminal trespassing, and receiving stolen property, and has a pen pending charges in Allendale and Hohokus, as well as Saddle River for burglary. Responding officers from this shooting were Detective Dave Passaretti, Detective T.J. Palaya, Police Officer Chris Crone, Police Officer Tom Zachman, and Police Officer Connor Walsh. We would also like to thank the area's uh, towns who also helped out on this. Here in Waldwick, we are very thankful for all that our police officers do. The officers tonight that are being honored, as well as all the entire police force, who every day leave their homes to protect all of us. President Obama once said, police officers put their lives on the line for us every single day. They got a tough job to do to maintain public safety and hold accountability to those who break the law. And here in Waldwick, we are very blessed to have a, a great police department who watches out for all of us every day. These certificates of recognition I will turn over to our police chief, and he in return will hand them over to our police officers who are the ones 
that we, we are honoring tonight. It's always nice to honor those who come forward to help one another. And as I said before, not only do we have a great police department, but we have a great fire department and also an ambulance corps who do not worry about themselves that always come out every day to help others. So tonight we thank our police department and we look forward to always having a police department that takes care of all of us. If you could give this to us, please. At this time, we have Liam Vin Olive here, who is an Eagle Scout, who is doing an Eagle Scout project. I'd like him to come up and explain to us what he would like to do. Hello, Council. My name is Liam Vimolive, and I'm a Boy Scout from Troop 88 of Waldwick, New Jersey. I'm a Life Scout, I'm going on Eagle, and I'm here to talk about my Eagle Scout project. This is a project that will be building a trail from Malcolm Tree to the Saddle River UNT. After clearing a path for this trail, we'll, we will have an added layer of mulch put on top of it to level it out. This trail will be uh, marked with logs along the side of it that I will be uh, getting from the wood. At the Saddle River UNT, the town will be building a bridge in the future to connect the two sides of the trails together. Once you get across the river, I'll be clearing another path leading to an already existing trail in Borough Park. The pre-existing trail is undamaged, except for a part at the end where it has a little rain damage and flood damage from being so close to the river. I will be repairing these and placing uh, logs on them side, on the sides to mark it. I will also be placing stakes so this does not happen. Stakes into the uh, logs so that this doesn't happen in the future and they stay down. So. Um, this will uh, make two trails in Borough Bar Park, making the park more accessible and expanding the activities that the park has. I'll be using volunteers from Troop 88 to finish a trail and the needed materials that can be found, like logs to mark the side of the trail, will, uh, will be in the wood. Uh, uh, for the, to start off the uh, project, I will be requesting 20 yards of mulch, some wheelbarrows, rakes, and shovels from the DPW. Uh, approving this, part, uh, this project for the town will be benef beneficial because it will be introducing two new trails to the town's repertoire. Um, that's it for my presentation, but if you have any questions about it, I'll be glad to answer them. I, I met Liam a couple of times in, the, in my office to talk about this project and another project he was doing. Now, Liam's sister was the Eagle Scout that did the first uh, path, and now he's going to continue the path that his sister has and add another path to it. Uh, yeah, the green one is the path that my sister made, and I will be uh, getting to the end of that and connecting it to Malcolm Tree. And I think I, I, I really think that this path is going to be really great because knowing Liam, he's going to probably want to do it much better than his sister did. <laughs> of course. And, <laughs> and it's very nice that you want to do this for our borough. I mean, it's, uh, we had a meeting before this one about park space, and we have a le very limited amount of park space in the borough. Mm -hmm. And a young person like you who wants to do something to make more space for the community, I commend you, and I think it's a good project to have him move forward on. Is everybody in, in a agreement with this? Yes. Well, you have, I'll go. Thank you. If you need me to sign anything, just you know where I am. And good luck with everything. Thank good you, luck. Council. Thank Congratulations. You. Also under my report, a gentleman by the name of Dan Wagner resigned from the planning board effective March 1st. Uh, Stan Kowalski will be put up as class five member of the planning board to fill the unexpired term of Mr. Wagner. John Vavork will all move up to alternate one and he will uh, continue the unexpired uh, space that Stan Kowalski has uh, given up and the new person on the board who will be alternate two will be John Cabibo. He'll be a member of the alternate board. This will be going into effect. As soon as tonight's meeting, we will send this over to the planning board, and they will all uh, be told where uh, their positions are now on the planning board. Also, there's a proclamation tonight, Developmental Disabilities Awareness Month. Whereas the people with dis developmental disabilities are of all racial, ethnic, educational, social, and economic backgrounds, and are all valued in contributing members of society. And whereas within the state of New Jersey, nearly one in four adults have some type of developmental disability. And whereas the Borough of Waltic fully supports the transitioning of individuals with developmental disabilities to promote inclusive and 
community integrations, and whereas Developmental Disability Awareness Month is a time to recognize a culture of meaningful and full inclusion of individuals with developmental disabilities in all facets of community life and to set forth its commitment to identify and remove barriers to inclusive for all Waldwick residents. And whereas early intervention, education, employment, and community-based services continue to be, a vi to be vital in enabling all citizens with a developmental disability to enjoy the rights of citizenship. And whereas recognizing and celebrating the abilities and contributions of people with developmental disabilities enriches everyone's life and signifies Waldwick's commitment to equal opportunity, access, and rights for individuals and disabilities. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that I, Thomas Giordano, Mayor of the Borough of Waldwick in Bergen County, New Jersey, do hereby recognize March 2023 as the Developmental Disability Awareness Month in the Borough of Waldwick and call upon everyone in attendance here to be witness to everything that we have done today. And we will, by doing this that we are doing tonight, we will make the world a little bit better. Dated March 14, 2023. This proclamation will be put in the lobby of our building for the whole month of uh, March, so everyone, if they want to come and see it, it'll be posted up there. Financial and Administrative Committee, Mr. Shalero. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'm going to be giving uh, a more detailed report later on in the agenda when we introduce the 2023 budget, so that will serve as my report for this evening. Thank you. Fire and Police Protection Committee, Councilman Saracola. Thank you, Mayor. Um, starting with the Police Department, we don't have a report. I spoke with the Chief this morning. Moving on to the Fire Department, so far this month, they had 18 total emergency calls with five mutual aid runs. The Assistant Chief also let me know on Saturday night that they were responding to a basement fire and no one was injured. The members are still heavily involved in the schooling that I mentioned last month as well. They also have a member in State Fire 1 class. To become a senior member in Interior Qualified, you need this class that runs for almost a year, twice a week. Other than that, maintenance has been happening every week, as well as interior drills and refreshers. Thank you. Thank you. Public Safety Committee, Councilwoman Sherman. Thank you. Uh, I was given a report from the Waldwick Volunteer Ambulance Corps for the month of February. They had 25 calls, which were answered by 16 members of the Corps. They responded to one mutual aid call. 23 of their calls were answered in less than five minutes. Um, they had three calls to the Bristol. Uh, so in two months, they have been there 10 times. Um, let's see, they went to, uh, the, I mentioned they had a mutual aid call in Midland Park. They went to Hackensack University Medical Center once Newbridge three times, and Valley Hospital 16. Three people uh, decided they didn't want to go to the hospital. Uh, and I have a meeting with them next Monday night, their general meeting, which I will be attending at the, um, on the second floor of their building. And um, I also attended the Board of Education meeting last night um, and do you mind if I say? No, sure. so? Okay. Um, I just wanted to mention the um, DECA team for the Waldwick High School won in Atlantic City, first place. And they now qualify to participate in the International Career and Development Conference in Orlando, Florida in April. I believe this is the first time this has ever happened in Waldwick's history. And uh, congratulations to Penelope Hom, Caitlin Hugh, Millennia, Jag Hats Panyon, and Tyler Burns, who represented Waldwick High School 2023. And they now qualify for Orlando, Florida. So congratulations to those students on a job well done. The Board of Education discussed their, um, the progress on the referendum. They have some of the science labs now open and they're very happy with the progress that's being taken place. Um, 
They also had a big turnout from the Waldwick Lions Club regarding their uh, carnival that's um, in limbo right now, waiting on approvals from the Board of Education. So um, it was a good meeting, it was short and sweet, and I just really wanted to congratulate these DECA students because they're really impressive. Thank you. Thank you. Councilwoman Web uh, Weber is not here tonight, so we'll move on to Public Works Committee. Councilman Ritchie. <coughs> Thank you, Mayor. So in the, the last two weeks uh, since we, we last been here, there's not a whole lot to report on on Public Works. We almost got slammed with a, a storm, but we, we were fortunate. Um, I, I did, in, since our last meeting, um, have a chance to attend uh, a meeting with the fire department. My, my colleague, uh, Councilwoman Sarah Cola, was out of town, so we met with the fire department to discuss uh, the potential new fire truck and um, made a presentation on different bids that they've been getting. And um, we asked for some additional information. Uh, but all in all, I think it was a good meeting, um, and, and I think we accomplished a lot. Also met with the mayor, Councilwoman Sarah Cola, and um, our borough administrator, Mr. Weary, uh, with the group that's doing the traffic study and uh, have, a, have a little bit of insight into kind of some of those reports, but I think a more detailed report's coming um, further and uh, sounds like a, a lot, um, you know, they'll, they'll make some recommendations and then the, the council will have a chance to review and, and we'll be going from there. So that's my report this evening, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Building and Grounds Committee, Councilman Schatz. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, first of all, Buildings and Grounds, um, just a little bit update, couple updates. We're starting the tile in Barrel Hall. Um, we, they fixed the handy, handicap door in Barrel Hall as well. Um, they're also now interviewing for new custodians. Um, hopefully that will go very quickly because uh, I think we, we, uh, it can really help, us, help out the town and the borough. Um, and then my report will get more detail, I'm sure, as soon as our, our budget and our capital budget are, um, are approved. <coughs> Which I introduced, introduced tonight. So okay. um, that's the buildings and ground. Um, environmental meeting, I just wanted to point out that that's this week. Um, I do want to point out that the styrofoam collection, which is working out very, very well, is um, April 15th is the next one. Um, <coughs> Saturday, I think, from 9 to 1. I'm down at the Borough Hall, Borough, uh, BBW. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, also wanted to point out that um, there's also hazardous waste collection at B BCUA is starting up again for its springtime. Uh, March 11th at Munaki, May 13th is at Mawa, and April 16th is Paramus. Um, you can go onto the website to find um, information about that <clears throat> if you uh, wanted to get rid of some waste spring cleaning type things. Um, and then also, uh, also I, I met uh, March 1st on, with the planning board, <coughs> and um, we had two resolutions that were approved, uh, a personal training uh, 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 tenant and a hair salon tenant, and then we had two applications, one for subdivision and one for psychotherapy counseling. Um, that's it, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Comments head, Administrator. Patrick. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, first, an update on the water treatment for PFAS. Uh, we have been having monthly uh, meetings with the DEP and the iBank uh, to discuss our permitting approval. Those have been uh, ongoing since 2021. Uh, we had one earlier this month, and as we get closer to getting our final approval from the DEP, laid out a little bit of a tighter timeline. Uh, we expect to receive approval for financing, which will enable us to advertise um, by the end of this month. Um, as long as we get that approval for financing, um, we expect then to award uh, a contract on May 23rd um, at that meeting and then complete the project early next year. The, uh, right now, the biggest um, effect on the timeline for the project is the availability of the actual treatment vessels. Um, so we have one installed at uh, Veterans Park. Uh, we need two at each of the five locations that we will be installing treatment on. And so uh, right now, the lead time for those items is 40 weeks. Uh, so that, you know, that's going to the biggest driver of the, the uh, length of the project once we award a contract. Uh, it was discussed about our traffic study. Uh, that is a study north of Prospect Street um, and then bounded by Route 17, Franklin Turnpike, and the Allendale border. Uh, we have engaged with Michael Baker to do that study. They've done our traffic counts and speed study, uh, presented some early findings to the mayor and council. Uh, they will prepare a preliminary report for review by the full council 
and then they will come and meet with um, the full mayor and council as well as the public um, to get input on their study findings and recommendations and so we want to make sure uh, that the public is involved in that uh, conversation especially the public um, that lives in or is affected by uh, those areas in the traffic study and so we will uh, be advertising those uh, to the public uh, via our community news and, and some Facebook posts and things as we get closer uh, something to look forward to and lastly uh, tonight there is a resolution approving the Borough of Waldwick's Home Improvement Program Policy and Procedures Manual. Um, this program is required by our, um, our rehabilitation obligation and our uh, fair share um, housing element plan. And the, the purpose of this uh, project is to take uh, either owner-occupied or rented um, uh, properties in the Borough of Waldwick and give them loans to, uh, to do home improvement um, programs to take substandard living conditions um, and bring them up to um, accepted standards. And so those would be for ma major um, housing um, infrastructure like roofs, electric, plumbing, load-bearing structures. And the, the loans can be anywhere uh, up to $23,000 for owners and $17,000 for renters. Um, there is an obligation to live in the uh, property for 10 years and then you can get the entire loan re um, uh, balance forgiven. If you leave earlier than 10 years, you'd be responsible to pay back that loan. Uh, but it is a great opportunity for people who are very low, low and moderate income um, to get these uh, loans which can ultimately be forgiven uh, to make substantial upgrades on their homes. And so we have, um, we have a, a good uh, pot of money in our um, affordable housing trust that is uh, generated from uh, development fees for when people in town develop their properties. And that is what will fund this uh, program. This, so this doesn't come out of taxes. This will come out of our affordable housing trust. We hope that the average uh, project is about $10,000. Uh, but like I said, they could be up to uh, 23000 for for homeowners. And so this is a great, pro uh, great program and a great opportunity um, for residents. We will begin marketing this program this week. So and we'll start to put out emails uh, with information on the program and how you can apply the the applications and all the program administration is done through uh, the borough's vendor community grants planning and housing uh, which are professionals they do this type of program uh, all throughout the state so um, it's something that we've been working on for a little while now and we're really excited to get off the ground that's my report mayor thank you thank you uh, borough clerk kelly thank you mayor um First, I just want to mention that um, nominating petitions are due by March 27th, 4 p.m. in my office. April 12th is the deadline to change a political party affiliation. Um, I might as well go to May. May 16th, voter registration the last day. May 16th is the last day to register to vote in the primary election, and my office will be open until 8 o'clock. Uh, switching gears, our uh, dog license late notices went, have just gone out. so. Um, those people who have not paid their dog license now have a $10 per dog late fee on top of the registration fee. Our tenant registrations are also out and they are due back by April the 7th. Um, we're already getting calls, so uh, it's on the website, but and in the Friday email blast, yard waste starts April the 11th. That's the weekly yard waste. Um, additionally, just want to mention that our uh, Waldwick Waste Disposal Day, which includes wood waste, and our shred day for our free shred day for BCUA um, is May the 6th. Shredding is from 9 until 1. The wood, I'm um, sorry, the waste disposal day is from 9 until 3. And that's at, all at the recycling center. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Grant Administrator Matt. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, one grant that I would like to alert the council and the public on that we've recently applied for is the AARP Community Challenge Grant. Uh, this grant is provided by the AARP to focus on projects that benefit entire communities with an emphasis on seniors. Uh, the mayor and council have discussed funding lighting for Borough Park, and after speaking with uh, Pat and the mayor, we felt that that was a good project to apply for funding for. Uh, so that closes tomorrow. The application is done and it's been submitted. If approved in May, the project would have to be completed by November. In addition to the borough's application, because we're only allowed to do one, the VFW was looking to put a handicapped accessible ramp on their facility. 
I do believe they are applying as well, so I do wish them the best of luck in this grant opportunity as well. I hope that both get approved because both seem like very good projects that will benefit not just seniors, but anyone who uses both the VFW, VFW facility and Borough Park. And that's all I have, Mayor. Thank you. Our attorney. Thank you, Mayor. No report this evening. There will be one item for a closed session. Okay, thank you. Consent resolutions and resolutions of the governing body. Thank you, Mayor. Be it resolved that the following resolutions herewith listed by consent, having been considered by the governing body of the Borough of Waldwick, are hereby passed and approved. 2013-113, approval of consent. 2013, I'm sorry, uh, policy vote A. Nicole Reyes uh, requests to use Pavilion A on April 20th from 6, to, uh, 6 p.m. to dusk for a wedding ceremony with alcoholic beverages being served. B, Michelle Kulesa requests to use Pavilion B on June 4th from 1 p.m. to dusk for a graduation party with alcoholic beverages being served. C, Waldwick Chamber of Commerce. Uh, run committee requests to display a three foot by five foot American flag fastened to the north side fence on Hopper Avenue Bridge during the Waldwick 5K run on May 7th with removal no later than May 8th. Policy vote D is going to be moved um, to later on into the meeting after the ordinance, uh, the public hearing on one of the ordinances. 2023-114 uh, award a non-fair and open contract to seal master municipal for a tar pot sealing unit in the amount of $21,958. 2023-115 award a non-fair and open contract to La Forza Construction LLC for a bollard replacement at the Route 17 South bus stop in the amount of $5,600. 2023-116 award a non-fair and open contract to Coaster Associates for upgrades to the Wyckoff Avenue booster station in the amount of $1,975. 2023-117, award a non-fair and open professional service contract to Boswell Engineering for engineering services for ADA curb ramp upgrades in the amount of $9,800. 2023-118, authorize the BCUA Solid Waste Cooperative Marketing Program Agreement for solid waste disposal. 2023-119, approval of the home improvement Program Policies and Procedures Manual created by Community Grants Planning and Housing dated February 2, 2023. 2023-120, authorized lease extension for Monopole uh, Tower Lease at Block 110, Lot 4 with AT&T. 2023-121, authorized a borough auction. 2023-122, authorized advertisement and receipt of bids for concessions at the Waldwick Municipal Pool. 2023-123, authorized advertisement and receipt of bids to lease and operate vegetative waste transfer station. 2023-124, approval of social affair permit for the Waldwick Community Alliance annual car show. 2023-125, accept donation of trees and labor for Borough Park. 2023-126, payment of vouchers. And 2023-129, authorization to refund and cancel taxes for 100% veteran exemption. Do I have a motion and a second to accept? Motion by Mr. Schatz, second by Mr. Shalero. On the question, yes. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Um, you know, one of the things I want to mention on here that you know we don't see on every agenda is uh, 120 authorized lease extension for Monopole. I mean, people may not be aware that the borough does own some cell phone towers, and we lease space to the major carriers, so it is a source of revenue for the borough. Pleased to see that AT&T will be uh, extending its lease, and happy to see that uh, revenue to continue for us. Anyone else? Yes. Yes, um, I'd like to speak on 2023-125 and point out that these trees are donated by the Waldwick Lions Club, 14 trees to the borough of Waldwick um, on their behalf. Thank you. Thank you. When you spoke to the Lions Club, did they uh, say how people want to help they do. They're interested in uh, purchasing the trees, but also being involved in their planting. Um, they, they were looking to create somewhat of a, a, an event around it for both the Lions Club and the community. Um, they, they have an interest in, um, you know, that, that sense of community and that sense of giving back. And, you know, they, they want to do this uh, not just for the club, for the borough, but you know, with us as well. Um, so we're excited about that opportunity. We will be uh, dedicating a bit of DPW resources uh, to this as well, especially pulling out the old trees and creating the, um, the pit for the new trees. Well, you know what, why don't we reach out to the Lions Club and see if they would want to get involved? Because 
when is it? In April is it's uh, April is a uh, uh, Earth Day, and usually we have the Beautification Committee, Environmental Committee, and also the Green Team get together. Last year we did cleanups and everything. So why don't we ask them if they would like to be involved? We could have one big ceremony which we could do cleanup, we could do planting, and we could do learning uh, education stuff for everybody. Because we did that last year, but we didn't have planting. And if they don't want, you know, if they don't mind helping us, we, and we'll help them plant too. As, you know, they are community involved, and we should help them. Sure. Everybody, right with that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, thank you. Um, the Lions Club reached out to me as. Um, uh, the director of the beautification committee and they asked me to uh, rally my committee to help with the planting right. what we'll so. do is we'll set up a we'll set up a meeting between the environmental green team and beautification and them and we'll just sit down with Kelly's usually in charge of it anyway and we will uh, have uh, yeah. we will have like the program set up and what we could do wonderful good great uh, Mr. Mayor, yes sir just, just quick question sure. um, this is for trees in the borough park that's right, yeah, right when you come into Borough Park and it splits between the parking lot straight ahead of you and Pine Street uh, to the right, there's that um, L shape of trees there. Those are um, old pear trees. They're probably installed about 12 years ago. Uh, they never really took uh, by reports of our DPW superintendent. We've had to remove a few over the past few years. We've had a couple that are leaners and we're trying to uh, ratchet strap back straight, uh, but th those trees aren't long for this world. So we had an opportunity uh, with the generosity of the of the Lions Club to replace them. Have we asked anybody to donate? Have we asked anybody to donate anything towards the, the garden out here that we're going to be doing around the parking lot at all or no? No, but if you know anybody, send them my way. We'll do, we're happy to take any donation. Yeah, and uh, these trees are uh, native to this area, which is a, uh, you know, something where as the borough uh, plants trees, we're looking to uh, make sure we in incorporate native trees. Anyone else? Well, just one policy A. Could you explain to this, this woman about what the policy is about wedding ceremonies in Borough Park? Because we had an issue once before with a wedding that they were going to bring uh, tables, chairs, and tents in and put it on the grass, and they thought they could do it, and then we had to say no to them. She's aware of it. Because I don't want, you know, I don't want to get a bride nervous during their wedding. Good. Anyone else? Clerk, please take the roll. Uh, Ms. Saracola? Yes. Mr. Ritchie? Yes. Mr. Schatz? Yes. Mr. Shalero? Yes. Mrs. Sherman? <coughs> yes. Okay. Public hearing. Would the clerk kindly read ordinance number 2023-5? Ordinance number 2023-05, an ordinance amending chapter 48 fees, section 64-4.1 parks, tennis tags, and fees, adding section 64-4.3 parks, Veterans Field, amending section 10.4 fee schedules for use of the second floor of the Ambulance Corps building, amending chapter 64 parks, section four permits for special events and adding section 64.4 park special events. Anyone from the council would like to comment on this ordinance that was just read? Yes. Uh, thank you. Um, I'm still sticking with my original um, problem with this of um, not charging fees to use the pavilion um, uh, and to uh, I have a problem renting out the tennis courts when we only have four of them because our residents then are unable to use the facilities thank you anyone else yes sir. Yeah, thank you mayor so uh, you know we talked about this uh, before you know, we get to the introduction and then, then the public advertising. Now, here we are to, uh, to, to review it one final time. And essentially, for those that weren't here for those discussions, um, our, our administrator and staff took a look at some of the facilities and resources in the borough. We charge fees for some, not for others. Over the years, we get requests from different organizations and companies to use our facilities. Um, so, so I think we just kind of felt like we needed to um, uh, visit that policy and, and take a look at uh, what we want to do with our resources in terms of making them available and perhaps charge a fee for some. Uh, essentially, I think the position we took was there are some uh, resources we want residents to have uh, free of charge to, to be able to use them and, uh, and yet make them uh, available to others uh, for a fee, uh, non-residents, private for profit corporations, things like that. 
uh, for, for a fee. Um, we did talk about the tennis courts quite a bit. We do only have the four courts, and we are putting limits on anyone who wants to use them for a fee. No one could ever use all four courts. Um, they could use two at the max, and they wouldn't be during peak times, I think, when they would be in demand. But I do believe this first year this will be in effect that we will monitor that. And if we feel like it's, uh, um, you know, taking away from residents using it, that uh, we'll have to revisit that. So uh, I think this is a, is a good improvement given our experience the past couple of years and, and uh, ready to, to take it to the next step. Anyone else? I close the council's comments and open it up to the public. Anybody from the public would like to comment on this ordinance that was just read? Thank you, Mayor. So right previous to this ordinance being adopted, there is a restriction on commercial activity um, on the tennis courts and, and borough uh, park as a whole, uh, with or the borough parks as a whole, without approval from the mayor and council. Um, how it will be going forward is that that commercial activity will be could be approved by the mayor and council for a fee. So right now, typically, we don't allow it because without collecting a fee, there's no advantage to the borough, especially for that. But there now will be a structure where the council can consider and potentially approve those requests for a fee. There is a limitation um, put on the, the amount of courts offered uh, by the ordinance. So we have four tennis courts, only two can be rented out at a time. And again, that's at the discretion of the mayor and council. So um, I know that the, the request before us, they had requested all day, Monday to Friday, and it just that wasn't realistic, right? And so you know, we've uh, pared down their request to a few hours over a few days and, and in a way that we think is reasonable and will still um, maintain the availability of courts for residents in the borough um, to make it uh, likely that the mayor and council would, would uh, vote favorably. Uh, on the follow -up. Is there, is it being contemplated times when this would be permitted or not? For example, you show up Saturday morning, tennis and pickleball, Yeah, similar. It's available on the weekends, but it would be at the discretion of the mayor and council. So the mayor and council understanding what the um, the residents need for court space would be uh, is taken into consideration when they uh, vote on that request. And actually, so, I, I so yeah, I don't begrudge someone coming down and giving lessons. I'm trying to get lessons and I think that's awesome. It's just you know there are certain times where it's start it, like it never used to be this crowded, and I think in part with the pickleball line, which has been awesome. Yeah. You know, there's been a lot of uptick in play with pickleball and tennis, and it just I'd ask you to consider how the courts are being used to think about when to allow the commercial activity. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? <clears throat> if not, I close the public's comments and ask for a motion a second to pass this ordinance on second reading and that the clerk be authorized to advertise on local legal newspapers as required by law. Do I have a motion a second? Motion by Don Singer by Paul. Clerk, please take the roll. Ms. Saracola? Yes. Mr. Ritchie? Yes. Mr. Schatz? Yes. Mr. Shalero? Yes. Mr. Sherman? No. And then, Mayor, if we can just yep. um, policy vote D is Superstar Tennis request to use two tennis courts June 1 or the conclusion of high school tennis season through August 31st from 3.30 to 7 on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays. Do I have a motion and a second? Motion by Don. Second by? No, it's really a policy vote. So. Make a second. <laughs> anyone, anyone have a question? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Uh, what, what day is June 1st? Is it on the weekend? June 4th. 
No, it's it? during the week. I think. They're only during the week. So. During the week, Monday, Tuesday, and during the week. Okay. Right. Yeah, so they Monday. would start then the, the following day. They, they would be there June 5th, should this be. No. 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 Oh, no. Go ahead. Anyone else? Yes. I just want to point out that this uh, policy vote D, they're asking for three times a week for three months, three and a half hours each day for 11 hours total a week that our residents who paid for those courts are unable to use the courts. Thank you. Anyone else? What's the, yes. what's the fee again? I'm just curious. I know we've talked about this, and I'm sorry, I should have written it down. No, the, the fee for them will be $1,000. So it's $1,000 per season. So should they decide then they want to extend it in the fall, it'd be another 1000 So we're charging 1000 bucks for thousand bucks. three and a half hours a night, three days a week. Yep. It just seems a little long. They it seems like three and a half hours, three days a week is a little long. Is this the group that came to us in the beginning? It is, yep. And I discussed with them, you know. I thought it was going to be two days a week. So we, we had, a, in previous discussions, had agreed to three days a week. Are the, the hours flexible for, for them? I mean, I just, the, I, 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 so I apologize. I just didn't envision them doing three and a half hours a yeah, day for three. I don't believe that the hours are flexible for them. And this is, they had asked for more hours and more days. So this was bringing, in my previous discussions with council or, or specific council members, this was bringing it down to um, what I thought would be um, uh, favorable to the mayor and council. So are they giving lessons? Is they that, are. so they only have to pay $1,000 for, um, using it for three months for 11 hours per week and three days a week. Thank you. I, I thought this was only for two days, unless I misunderstood. I misunderstood as well. I mean, two days is good, Monday and Tuesday, but three days. Can we go back to them and say, Two days. That they, I mean, can we change, can we amend this and vote on an? On an they need to know right away. Um, you can do whatever you like. I mean, I, I would I would say that if if three days would be voted down by the mayor and council, then I'm sure the applicant would appreciate it being considered tonight for two days. Um, but <coughs> you like. It's. It's just an awful lot of time that our own <coughs> residents cannot use the courts. Um, it's, it's in peak get out of work and look forward to going to play tennis with your family or your friend. And there's only two courts available for all of these hours all summer long. It just doesn't seem like a... <coughs> Uh, something our residents would be happy about when they got to the courts looking forward to play tennis. Anyone else? Well, what if we were to revise it and offer them Mondays, Tuesdays? And then <clears throat> we approve that, and then you tell them that that's the offer. And or, or, or you want to remove this from the... Want. Sorry? Or yeah, but the thing is, if, you, if you're going to tell her, them or her or whatever, too, then we have to make sure, if, you know, not that you have to be forced to vote for it, yes or no, but if you tell them, too, and then all of a sudden you come, they come back and we, we're going to put this to a vote, and then you say no, it's wasting of every, your time, our time, their time, everybody's time. Well, we can vote now. I'll amend the resolution to be Mondays and Tuesdays, not Thursdays. Can we do that? Do, does the, do you care which two days they do? If it's not Friday, I'd say? If it's not Friday or a weekend. Could, if that's where you're leaning, could you say two days, Monday through Thursday? Give, give them the, some, some flexibility. Okay. If, if it doesn't matter to you, at least, it doesn't that opportunity. Right. I think the weekend should be left to the residents. Yeah, yeah, no, I think. 
do we know how busy these courts really are in the summer at this time? Like, are people like waiting around to present on the courts uh, on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday? In the evening, I mean, three thirty, it's hot, right? In the summer, so yeah. so you know, we see the most play, I would say, early in the morning. Uh, there is an uptick in the summer after uh, after work, but I'd say not as much in the morning, from so, what I see during the week. But that's, so then, are two courts enough? Based on what, people. though? Like, how do we know? Yeah, again, that's just based on my observation. Again, I, I don't know. Well, what's the loss here for us? We're getting $1,000. We're restricting it to two days. Yeah, but I don't want to give the whole all the cost away to, to one yeah. group when we have a resident that would like to. I, I hate to see a resident waiting outside the gate. To get oh, I thought, the, I thought the implication was that we should let them do more days. Yeah, I'd like to know if they're that crowded. Like, is two enough? Can we rent these two out? It, isn't this the first season that we're having the pickleball available? Was it available last season? Yes. Okay, because I know pickleball is very popular with our residents, and um, it's just very disappointing to me to even entertain the thought of not having every single court seven days a week available to our residents. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think we're very generous. We closed down the courts for the um, high school girls team in the autumn and the boys team in the spring, which is wonderful, and our residents are used to that. But to go ahead and um, close it down for a business to conduct business and teach lessons on our courts that we only have four, why don't they... I'm not saying they should, but other towns and county courses have multiple, multiple courts. We only have four. It's not fair to take them away from our residents. But are we really thinking about what about the Walda kids that might want to use the courts in their town and use these people for their lessons? Like, this is still an opportunity for kids to play tennis or adults to play tennis. Did you ask these people how many people from Walda? Program. A minority of Waldo people are from the program. They were hoping, I mean, what they said to yeah, me to was they were hoping to get more people yeah. by doing a program in Waldo. The, this is the group that typically operates at, uh, in the covered courts during the summer months. Uh, the people who take their lessons like to be outside, and so they're looking for an outdoor thing. <clears throat> well, it is the pleasure of the council. Would you like to go back to them and say, listen, two days? Or just say no? I'd be, I'd be okay with two days. Two days. None. We've got four to one. Please go back to them and let them know that the two days they could have, not mm -hmm. the weekend. Yeah. yeah, two days, Monday through Thursday. Monday through Thursday, not the weekend. Right. Sorry? No. But you could do it on the new biz. Uh, you could do it on the public's comment. Okay, we're going to have the introduction of ordinance. Would the clerk kindly read ordinance number 2023 06? <clears throat> ordinance number 2023 06. Borough of Waldwick, Bergen County, State of New Jersey, calendar year 2023 ordinance to exceed the municipal budget cost of living allowance and to establish a cash bank pursuant to NJSA 40A colon 4-45.14. A motion to second is in order to move and pass this ordinance on first reading and that it be advertised in local legal newspapers as required by law, setting a uh, hearing two weeks from tonight's meeting at 7.30 p.m. or soon thereafter as the matter may be reached. We have a motion and a second. A motion by Don, second by Mike. On the question. So essentially, and we're going to be introducing the, the budget in a minute and talking about the, uh, the increases that, that we're seeing this year. Um, in New Jersey, there are um, a, a maximum amounts established by state that uh, dictate how much you can increase uh, appropriations and how much you can increase taxes. So there's a tax cap and appropriation cap. Um, those limits are determined by New Jersey at 2.5% right now. 
And what we're uh, requesting is the um, ability to exceed that cap by an additional percent uh, as necessary to meet our obligations. And you know, this year we are finding it necessary to do that. So we're uh, going to be requesting the ability to increase our appropriation cap to uh, an additional percentage. Anyone else? Clerk, please take the roll. Ms. Saracola? Yes. Mr. Ritchie? Yes. Mr. Schaff? Yes. Mr. Shalero? Yes. Mrs. Sherman? Yes. Clerk, kindly read resolution number 2023-127. Introduction to the 2023 municipal budget. Be resolved that the following statements of revenue and appropriations attached here to constitute the local budget of the borough of Waldeck, Bergen County, New Jersey for the year 2023. Be it further resolved that the said budget be published in the Bergen record in the issue of Monday, March 20th, and that a hearing on the budget will be held at the Municipal Building, 63 Franklin Turnpike, Waldwick, New Jersey, on Tuesday, April the 11th at 7.30 p.m., or as soon thereafter as the matter may be reached. Motion and a second is in order to move and pass this ordinance on first reading and that it be advertised in local legal newspapers as required by law, setting up public hearing two weeks from tonight's meeting at 7.30 p.m., or soon thereafter as the matter may be reached. Do you have a motion and a second? Motion by Don, second by Mike. Uh, before I hand it over to Don, I just want to just say that tonight we're presenting our municipal budget, and I'd like to thank everyone that was involved in putting this budget together. Our administrator, our CFO, our clerk, our assistant clerk, our grant administrator, and all the department heads. They all did a great job doing, putting this budget together. Also, I'd like to thank the council. This was a very hard budget this year. And we had to think a lot about Waldwick. We had to think a lot about the residents. We had to think a lot about the future of Waldwick. And I think uh, this budget will show that we worked together and produced a budget that we all could live with and we could all be proud of. And I know, Don, you'll, it's up to you now. Thank you, Mayor. And, and um, yeah, as the mayor said, this was year was a little different. Uh, in prior years, um, you know, we didn't see uh, the need to, to even look at the appropriation caps and, and tax caps and things like that. But um, what you'll see when, when the budget information is available to you, a, a few things to be on the lookout for. First of all, when we talk about the borough's budget, we're really talking about a number of different things. So the borough has an operating budget, sometimes we refer to as the current fund, but it's basically our operating budget, and we have a capital budget. And uh, those things are, are clearly broken out in our budget. Uh, as you can imagine, our operating budgets, the day-to-day -day operations, uh, uh, expenses, salaries, things like that. And our capital budget is investing in our community when we do improvements to buildings, or infrastructure, purchasing equipment, uh, vehicles, supplies, things like that. And then we have a water utility that has a separate budget. So our water utility also has an operating budget and it has a capital budget as well. So our challenges in 2023, different I'd say uh, than the past decade or so, when uh, in a given budget year you would see an item or two perhaps that uh, you saw significant increases in the cost of those items and it was often offset by reductions in other items. It could be offset by a number of things that you felt like you had some control over. Um, what we saw this year, really for the first time in my experience uh, in, in doing this for many years, was um, a number of significant line items in our budget that saw double-digit percentage increases at the same time. Um, and and uh, what's frustrating for us was we have no control over any of those line items. It's not like they're negotiable. And I'll give you some examples in a moment. And it's not like <clears throat> we could decide whether we wanted to keep those things or not do those things. So, you know, kind of an interesting challenge for us when you think about, you know, typically when we're introducing the budget, we talk about, well, you know, we have uh, contractual obligations, we have this, we have that. You know, this year we really needed to focus on uh, what our caps were. Uh, what these uh, increases meant to us and, and how we address the budget for the year. So we're talking about things like 
employee health benefits went up 22% this year. Um, to put in perspective, the last few years, the state uh, health benefits fund went up about 2% a year. Some years it went up 1% or none at all. Um, most other health benefit funds that uh, we see in, in both the private sector as well as in the public sector probably went up about 6, 7, 8%. Then we had uh, the unfortunate timing that our contract for our solid waste collection expired and we needed to renew that this year. So essentially, we'll talk about that in terms of this is something you've already been experiencing because we were looking at increases in our uh, garbage collection, garbage and recycling collection of about 60%. Some other towns that we've talked to have gone up 70, 80% in one year. To help reduce that increase, we made some changes to our collection schedule. We made changes to our collection amounts that people can put out. And we took away bulk pickup from curbside uh, collection by the, the, the garbage hauler. So the net result of that was we go out to bid and, uh, and our garbage contract went up 40%. Garbage disposal, which is separate than collection, went up 11%. Our insurance for the borough for property and casualty and workers comp went up 10%. Uh, our contribution to the state's pension funds for our municipal employees, we contribute to two different funds, went up 21% and 10%. So, and there were other line items, but you could, you could get a sense that these are things that are not negotiable and these are things that, um, that we need to, to provide and support. So. Um, and, and the other challenge was, you heard us talk about the cap bank a few minutes ago. Um, you know, we have to meet all of these obligations plus the other increases we see just in our normal operations. Um, and the, the cost of fuel, the cost of electricity, the cost of all the other things that the borough needs to function to deliver services to our residents. So. Um, late in our negotiations, the state did offer some relief by waiving some of those items that normally fall under that cap, but it was still too high a price tag, and the mayor and council and the staff spent a lot of time looking at our budget and where we could make cuts in those line items where we have some flexibility, where we could manage the spending perhaps and control, control the costs. So uh, the bottom line, uh, to, to that was, and, we'll, and you'll see this when you get the budget documents and see the budget documents we make available, is that uh, we were able to, to meet a lot of our goals. We were able to, even though we received a waiver to the cap on a number of these items, we still made enough significant cuts that we met our obligation to the cap, even uh, including all of the items that could have been waived, counting them in the cap. And um, for the first time in, in you know, a, a long, long time, we're seeing that we do uh, foresee a tax increase in this budget of 2.5%. So one of the things I want to make sure we understand is we're not saying that there's a 2.5% increase on all of your property taxes. This is only the budget that is the borough's portion of your taxes, so it's about 20% of your property taxes. So to help you understand that in real dollars, for the average home valued at $424,000 in the borough, the average tax increase is $56 a year. So that's what 2.5% is to the average homeowner. So despite uh, painting the gloomy picture, uh, let's talk about some of the things that the budget does do. Um, we talked about making some changes to the uh, solid waste collection schedule and 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 that area, but uh, aside from that, all of our services are going to continue. We're going to continue to provide um, the the support and and the services in terms of uh, uh, paving roads, uh, maintaining our parks, maintaining our infrastructure, um, and doing all the other things that uh, that we do for the borough. We haven't cut out any programs or made any other modifications. Any of the programs we might have cut out a couple of concerts in the park. Sorry about that. Um, but those were just added over the past year or so. So we didn't eliminate the concerts in the park. We just cut a couple of them out and, and things like that. One of the things we are doing that is new in the budget uh, that we're kind of excited about 
is um, supporting a police request of uh, allowing them to seek accreditation. What this does is it basically uh, provides our police department with support resources and training that helps them achieve accreditation that should reduce our risk, our liability, and uh, could reduce our insurance costs in the future. In the capital budget, we're going to be investing in our roads. We are going to be spending about $900,000 in capital improvements in our roads this coming year. Some of those are directly for our repaving program, and other funds will be going toward matching grants that we receive for special programs and projects. We're going to be putting um, charging stations in our new parking lot for electric vehicles. Uh, we received a grant for that, so we're putting up matching funds for that as well. And uh, you know some other things that we need to do. Um, in the water utility, some improvements include developing solutions to address uh, parts of town where there's a tendency to see water discoloration. We have some solutions planned for that, and we've budgeted money in our water utility capital improvement budget. And we're going to be doing some maintenance and repairs to the water tanks. Now, for those of you who don't know, we're actually property owners in Wyckoff, and on that property, we maintain our water tanks. And... Um, we, we make sure we maintain and manage our infrastructure in all areas, including our water utility, and maintaining those tanks is going to be a significant investment this coming year. So we'll get into a little more detail once the budget brochure is out. When we have our public hearing on April 11th, um, I think our uh, staff, our department heads, our professionals that made contributions to the development of this budget, uh, the time the mayor and council put in on uh, developing this budget and finalizing what we're bringing to you this year. And uh, I think it was uh, a job well done and look forward to having a more detailed discussion on April 11th. That's all. Thank you. Anyone else? <clears throat> yes, sir. Can I just say a few words? So, um, so I've always been a great admirer of this uh, mayor and council. Mostly, I've, I've been here for 12 years. For 10 of that, uh, the mayor and council did not raise taxes, uh, which I thought was a pretty amazing feat, one of the few, I think, in the area, if not the state, uh, to be able to do that for that long. Uh, so when, and, and so when taxes do increase, it's your, it's your school that's increasing it, and it's your county that's increasing it, not the, not the municipality. So when I ran, was running for council, I thought it's going to be fun, a council that doesn't raise taxes. And uh, when, we got, when we got the news this year that I think these line items that are non-negotiable, we just have to pay them, we get bills for them, increased uh, in, in numbers like $800,000, I think, right, right, Councilman, in, in that range. We were at a huge disadvantage, and this was not a very fun budget, I think. And so I think th this council worked really hard for weekends, long days, nights, uh, to try to find ways in which we can cut this budget. I think there were a lot of really good recommendations. We cut things we cut several hundred thousand dollars out of this budget in order to make it work. Um, I, I know not everybody is happy with a tax increase. I'm not happy with a tax increase. But I, w I can say with great confidence that this is not a nice-to-have budget. This is a needs-to-have budget. This is as bare bones as you can get for a municipality to be able to maintain a basic level of... Uh, a basic level of support to its, its residents, and there's, there's just no fluff in here. So. Um, I'm, 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 this, despite, I think, all the challenges, I'm, I'm proud of it. And, and as you said, we did think to the future. I mean, we do think five, ten years from now, how can we uh, get ourselves back to a point where we aren't raising taxes and, and we have a sustainable, balanced budget. So, uh, so I thank everybody for the, the – it, it, was, it was a lot of hard work. Mr. Mayor, um, I also want to point, now that we've heard this sad news to a certain extent, we will be going out throughout the year trying to do things just like our administrator is trying to do, and, and it's trying to find ways to help pay for some of the operating budgets that we need, like the fees on the tennis courts. I mean, and it may seem small, but it is those small little things are going to help us um, save money in, in our taxes. And we've really been thinking about that. I'm sure we're going to be thinking about all those things in the future of this year and in the years going forward. Now. If we end up having a budget that we don't have to raise uh, uh, taxes, maybe we'll take that away if we have to. And we won't need to have um, uh, money fees from them. And we won't have to 
rent out some of the courts. But we do have to find ways to be able to, to, um, uh, uh, to find ways to pay for some of these things that we want to give to the, to the, uh, to the residents. And they're going to have to give in some other ways, too. If, if they don't want to pay taxes, then they're going to have to try and make up um, with it with sm some smaller things. We can't find, we've been looking for things where we can make big, um, uh, big uh, additions or big, uh, big cuts, but it's, it's very hard to do that. We're trying to make little cuts, and we're also trying to make, find little ways to pay for um, these things. And we'll, we'll continue to do that throughout the whole year and, and going forward. And I want to thank the council for doing a very good job at it, the mayor, the council, um, the administrator, the clerk, uh, all the uh, assistant administrator, and DPW, the department heads, all did a great job in getting, trying to get this budget down. Um, we still have some more decisions to make for the, rest of, for the rest of this year, but I think we did a great job in putting that together, and I'm proud of them also. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? If not, or take the roll. Ms. Saracola? Yes. Mr. Ritchie? Yes. Mr. Schatz? Yes. Mr. Shalero? Yes. Mrs. Sherman? Yes. Okay. Under unfinished business, just have one item. Uh, at the last meeting, we had some residents come to us and talk to us about the uh, 2021 uh, uh, Waldwick High School soccer team who won the state championship. And they requested us to put up a sign or signs in our town when you come into Waldwick that says, Welcome to Waldwick, home of. And I told Mrs. Centennial that I will get back to her. I will speak to the council. What I did last week, I spoke to all of you. I sent you an email, two at a time, so I didn't break no rules. So I didn't have to have the attorney say anything to me. And what happened was I um, told everybody. You all came and gave us your uh, information. And uh, we will be putting a sign up that says, uh, uh, welcome, it will say, home of the 2021 Waltic High School uh, State Champ. We are going to be putting it, and Mr. Centennial knows this, we are going to be putting it at the entrance of Borough Park when you come into Borough, I'm sorry, and when you come into the borough, it will be on the... Uh, sign that's off of Route 17 going north. What will happen is right now it says welcome to Waldwick. Underneath it there will be a sign put up like the sign she showed us all. It will be put up there. With that it will be also an ordinance that will be written up saying how when we move forward anybody who receives in this school system a, uh, an honor like that it will be up to the discretion of the mayor and council to put a sign on another one of the uh, holes when you come into Waldwick six holes in Waldwick when you're coming in, or five, we will decide where we're going to put it. But it will be placed to honor the school uh, and their achievement. Ms. Centennial knows about this. I spoke with her. She, she could not make it tonight, but she says to thank everybody for giving the honor to the 2021 Waldwick Soccer Team. That's all I have under unfinished business. Anyone have any unfinished business? New business. Anyone have new business? Yes. Um, are we going to go back and honor the other boys' soccer team that Nothing won? was said yet, but if they do come forward, we will put a sign up for them that will be on one of the other polls. If a group of people come in and uh, ask us, we will do like we did last time. And, but this time, we have to remember that we have to do it. And she we knows. have to do what? We have to do putting it up for them because we did it for these Right. Okay. Thank you. So when someone comes forward, then we'll discuss it. Any other new business? If not, no. yes. yeah. Um, I just wanted to mention the um, PBA egg hunt is going to be held on April 1st at 10 a.m. at the high school stadium field. Uh, bring your little ones. I believe it's uh, fifth grade and under. Uh, bring your baskets and meet the Easter Bunny. Um, and also, I'd like to wish all the residents a very happy St. Patrick's Day. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Mayor. Yes. Um, Kelly had sent out an email, I think, like last week, about the county recognizing Mental Health Month as May, and I was wondering if we were going to do a proclamation. Yep, for we do that. one every month. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Kelly's very good at this. I know. Anyone else? Okay. If not, we'll have public comments. Anybody from the public would like to comment, please come to the the podium to the microphone, state your name and address for our record. Good evening, everyone. Chris Roger, 37th Bergen Avenue. 
Is this for uh, comments or is this for a question and dialogue? Okay. Up to you. No, I, I don't play tennis. Maybe, maybe I should. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I am a fiscal conservative, so I'm just, just running the numbers. I was wondering if you did any benchmarking on the cost to the length of court. My calculation. We had, it, it's difficult with, we had looked at it, I had looked at it. It's difficult on the private side because um, they, it's common for them to charge a percentage of fees received, which we're not interested in. Well, I didn't think we'd be interested in doing because then we end up having to take in the cash ourselves and paying out them as a vendor or subcontractor. Uh, for, for public courts, um, I, it, it wasn't as clear as we're looking to make it here. Like the, some people are doing it by hours, some people it's by season. Some, you know, it's just it was hard to make the comparison here. So um, on the private side, not applicable. On the public side, generally in the range of, of what we're proposing or what we've adopted. Okay, good. Another one you mentioned the charging station. That's, that's great. Wonderful to hear. How is it going to work? The installation funded by the town, but there will be a fee to charge there. Yes. Great. And then the affordable housing loans. If somebody leaves within the ten year period, how do you plan to recoup their loan? So, for um, for owners of a property, there is a uh, a mortgage lien and a deed of ease or a, a deed restriction on the property. On a rented property, it's just a deed restriction since they have typically no mortgage. And so those are the two mechanisms so that if you leave prior to the 10 years, um, the, the program can recoup its money. Now, on the rental side, you can change over tenants in that time, um, and there will be no penalty to you as long as the owner who received the loan uh, continues to be the owner. That's right, the owner of the rental property. Yep. Does the owner need to be in the affordable range? Or no, on the, rental si <laughs> on the rental side, you look at what the rent is. And so part of the restriction um, on the rental side would be that the, they remain at a rate that the program considers affordable. Um, and depending on the category, depend uh, affordable for very low, low or moderate income um, residents of the borough. And that is, um, that is typically in line with um, the affordable housing rentals that we have in the borough. You know, the, you, we, have, um, uh, we have properties in the borough that uh, qualify for our, our affordable housing inventory that are um, owner occupied and some that are rentals. And the ones that are rentals, um, they have a, a set uh, maximum that they can rent those properties out for. Um, that's the same. Uh, construct here uh, for the uh, the rehab uh, units for rent. Thank you. Thank just, you. Just two more. What, what was the, the premise of initiating the traffic study? We had a, a gentleman that came here and was concerned about the feeding to, to the town, but with the streets of the town, he was also concerned about the uh, closing of the road leading on to Route 17. So he came in front of us. He asked us to do a Survey and survey and do a look into it, and we did it. Well, we're in the process of doing it. No, excellent. Thanks. I've, I've noticed uh, anecdotally more, more traffic on the department half. Not, not a speeding concern, but I don't know if you're coming down Franklin Turnpike south, a lot more cars than you are on the Berkeley. And I don't know if you go to traffic apps, Waze, and Google saying, hey, it's quicker to get to 17 this way than to go to Prospect. I'm always curious every time I'm at the corner of my life, so I want to follow one of these cars to see if they're on this street or if they go yeah. all the way down. The street. gentleman that was here, that was one in the street. I don't mind going on 17 personally. Yeah. Well, we, we, yeah. we had the meeting with the company, and they were very, they had a lot of good ideas for us uh, to look at, and uh, you know they're going to bring back their findings for us. They did a great in-depth study of everything. Very good. Very so impressed to see them. You know, we had a Zoom meeting, and it was it was really good. That's great to hear. Yeah. 
Yeah, and I think one of the people, it was his relatives live in the community? That's right. Yeah. One, of, one of the gentlemen that did the survey, his family lives here. Yeah, in-laws. Yeah. The in-laws, so we have to be nice. Yeah, and I saw the boxes inside the room. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good, good, good. Thank you very much. Last one. Yes. The, um, the gun range in town, is that a public access availability? It's a club. How does that work? It's a club. And you have to join the club? As yeah. A yeah, the police departments use it. Uh, different departments all share it. We have a big uh, uh, network with different uh, towns, but there is a pistol club that uses it too. Yeah, and you could. Process for applying for the club? Sure. What you could do is give us your name and address. Kelly will take it down after the meeting, and what we'll do is we'll get in contact with the gentleman who's in charge, and he'll call you. Excellent. Thank you. Thank You're you welcome. Appreciate You're welcome. Thank you very much. Anyone else? A3 Highwood Ave. Uh, I had a quick question regarding the tennis courts. Is the fee going to be based on one court or two courts for thousand dollars per court? So that'll generate two thousand dollars. So then the cost per hour is going to be around six eighty per hour the rental fee for someone that's going to be generating income. That sounds right. Yeah. And are there limits on how many students they can have on those two courts at a given time? Not per the ordinance. Looking out for the town. The town's gonna, if someone's going to make money off the backs of the town, we want to vote, uh, and we're going to forego residents from losing money. The money should at least be in their percentage of the budget. They, they would charge if they were out of the uh, zone. Mm -hmm. That's what the town charges them like fifteen to sixteen dollars per court. Just consider that. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? If not, do I make a motion? I have a motion to go into court. Uh, Jeff Rogoff, 63 East Prospect Street. Um, so again, back to the tennis court. And again, I say this as someone whose children have taken tennis lessons, attempted tennis lessons, and a fan of tennis lessons. Um, I really would encourage when you set the hours of that to think in terms of like, is there any flexibility? Five to seven I, is a pretty popular time for people to be playing their sports. I mean, I work on sports on Wednesday, Saturday morning, so I, I can speak to that being a really popular time. But I've gotten called a number of times from people in the town for me to come down and ask me if I'm available at five o'clock. If this is in part tied to like people associated with Walden Public Courts, which does not have air conditioning in the summer, and I'm not surprising that they're looking for some other place to play other than Walden without air conditioning, a lot of their base is kids. And there may be greater flexibility about scheduling this earlier in the day um, if it is kids. And if it is kids, I think that there's likely to be less conflict than there might otherwise be from a 5 to 7 o'clock time. Um, I encourage you to come down and see. Like, again, the days, the open days to prepare people. So again, I'm not trying to be difficult in terms of this. I appreciate the budget issues and the discussions of that and the need to raise revenue. I'm just saying, you know, it has been wonderful seeing the increased use on the tennis courts. I've been in this town since 2005, you know, for a while. I didn't see anyone on the tennis courts. That made me sad as a tennis player. As a pickleball player, I'm delighted that there's a line. And, like, for the first time last year, I'd show up on a Saturday morning, and it was full, and it was awesome. So I really would want to make sure that we're making it available enough so that frustrated and then come to the town. If we are going to do two courts at a time, I would ask them that the two courts be together so that when the kids are there, they're not getting onto the other courts, which would, you know, so, uh, you know, again, there's a lot of logistical things to think about. And, um, I encourage you to do 
so it's, it's great to see the town using that that way. Um, with regard to the road study, um, I remember when I was here previously and there was discussions about that there was, you know, you had mentioned that any changes, part of the changes would be contemplating how it affects Prospect Street. You know, as a resident of Prospect Street, you know, we obviously can bring road into the town. I expect that. I live here. I know what I'm getting when I move into Prospect Street. Squidgy, I know you know it as well. I know. Um, but, you know, it, I am a little concerned just like, you know, that we need to contemplate how the changes would affect that road. Getting out that road in the morning is already quite, you know, you have to be very careful. Go very quick, you know, and just with more traffic is just something I'm a little nervous about. When, when we met with them and well, when we had a Zoom meeting with them, that was one of my questions to them. I said, you know, I don't want to do a survey or do a traffic study and dump all these cars onto another street or road. And they're very aware of that and they're very concerned. I, I appreciate you raising that question. Uh, last point um, minor irritation, which I, I'm happy to deal with. So, with regard to the dog fees, um, I tried to submit my dog fee in January. Um, I was unable to do so, at least with the check, because my dog is scheduled to get her rabies shots in September. I recognize there's a town or state ordinance that does not let you register the dog unless you've had the rabies shots prior to maybe May. I forget what the exact date is. I spoke to my veterinarian. He did not recommend that I move the, that, the shots up earlier. So I just going to have to deal with the fact that I'm going to have to pay a $10 late fee each every few years. I guess what I was kind of wondering, although the, the, there is an ordinance that requires a rabies vaccination prior to registration, there is nothing that requires a late fee specifically. I'm wondering if it is possible if, a, like, if someone in my situation can just fill out the paperwork, submit the check in January or February, and then come back to you when I have the, vac the, the rabies vaccination. I'm certainly, not go I'm certainly going to have my dog vaccinated. I just do not want to alter the schedule based on my vet's recommendation. I'm happy. In fact, I did pay you in January or February, but I was told we could not do that because that's not the procedure. So I'm just trying to figure out if there's a way that I could avoid every three years having to pay the late fee because I do not want to alter, at the advice of my veterinarian, the vaccination schedule. And I know you can't issue it until the spring. And that's that you just said it. We can't issue you a tag until that vaccine, uh, until that rabies vaccine is current. Um, so yeah, you're, I know you're in that thing. And Tatiana and I have been trying to come up with something that we could present to the council to say, what can we do to, to make this a little bit easier for people? But, um, and we're still working on it. So as of right now, I don't have anything, there's no change. I mean, I guess the thing I would just note is like, I don't, I'm not aware of anything in that state ordinance requiring I would imagine that if a resident comes through in January and February and says, here is my paperwork, here is my check, please cash my check. Don't issue me the license yet, because I know you can't because it's verboten, but I will come to you later with it. You know, it but we can't cash the check. That's the issue. Okay. That's, we can't, you we, can't even cash the check? You can't cash the check because it's in a system. Your, your dog license is in a system, and in order to, they're, they're issued consecutively, so as soon as we enter that check in, it's going to say, okay, now you're the next dog license number, whatever. Escrowed. It's just not how the system works. Okay, we're, we're coming, we'll come up with something, I, but for, it. I I'm, mean. I'm, I'm, what's what's going to mean, again, it's not the end of the world, but you know, every three years, I'm going to have to pay a late fee when I otherwise would be delighted to give you my check and paperwork timely. So. What, what you really should do is just wait until November 1st, and then you'll never have that issue. <laughs> Wait till November first to get your dog okay. vaccine. If, if, I, if your vet will if let you do that, says okay. We'll. I don't know if that. they will, but okay. Thank you so much. That's how I did it. Anyone else? If not, I make a motion to go into close. We have a motion. Motion by Don, second by Paul. All those in favor. 